Hey guys, Too Legit City here. Today's video is going to be the Hot Water Geyser Tamer. In today's video, we're going to show you how to safely tame a hot water source that's specifically around the 95 degrees Celsius temperature. And that's going to typically mean the salt water geyser or the water vent that comes out at 95 degrees. And in both cases, I'm going to be showing you a way to infinitely store the hot water and allow it to maintain temperature. A lot of the times in this game, you're going to have to deal with hot and cold. And depending on what you're doing, sometimes the heat is going to be beneficial. So we're going to show you how to maintain temperature, store it infinitely. So to get it started, we are utilizing what is known as the infinite spill design for the uh, hot water guys are right here that's coming out at 95 degrees. As I bring up the gas overlay, you can see that we have a hydrogen bubble here and a CO2 bubble there causing these gases stacked with the door and the airflow tiles means that we could have our liquid pressurized to an absurd number in our case right now our liquids around 94 degrees around six to seven kilograms six thousand to seven thousand kilograms per tile and it's going to fluctuate a little bit with this water pressure level typically regular tiles would break and the only tiles that don't break from high pressure liquids is going to be the airflow tiles and the doors that are not pneumatic. Both the airlock and mechanized airlock doors will not be breakable. And you guys want to make sure you lock it so that your dupes don't stand in it and open it up as that could break the system. Uh, there's a more in-depth video that explains how it works, what the mechanics are. But we basically need to have liquids on these tiles have the box fill up to here and then this causes the gases that you release in this area to not be able to move when that happens you want to have two separate gases typically what i do is i let one gas fill up both tiles and then i will put a vent right here then i will manually put in a gas pump pump up a separate gas from elsewhere and allow that to get pumped in once that happens, the amount of gas per tile doesn't matter as this is 500 grams, this is 3000. As long as you have two separate elements, that's all you need. And that's how we have our infinite pressure. Now, along with this, there's a couple of other things with the design. One of the things I talked about was not needing to cool your desalinator. One of the things about the desalinator is that it generates heat 8K DTU per second. And especially if you have a geyser with either salt water or brine, it's going to be running pretty constantly. So because of that, it's going to be generating heat at a steady rate. And a lot of times you don't want to make a separate system to cool that down. So in our case, we're submerging that in the hot water. That might seem counterintuitive where you put the building that needs to be cooled down in a hot water box. But believe me, this is going to have such a tough time heating up the salt water. And not only that, you're consistently spilling in more 95C salt water that this desalinator is going to have a hard time actually heating it up. You're adding in water at a fixed temperature that's lower than an overheat. And the amount of water per tile is such an absurd number that it's going to take you a long time to heat it up. Not only that, you're pumping out the hot water and you have about 30 degrees buffer in Celsius uh, range to have that break. I've never actually had this break on me and typically I put two desalinators inside the salt box. You would just have to expand this out to put the second desalinator due to the amount of water we get um, as a response. But by submerging this and it can be flooded, as you can see, this is still usable. No flood disabling the building. Right here, it's just a pipe outlet that's being blocked that this will never actually overheat. Another thing we also did was we added a vacuum. You could easily pump this out after uncovering this and you could safely pump it out as you could see that the only gas is on these two tiles. By having this be a vacuum, you guys could actually see that the heat does not come out. This means that the thermal energy created by the geyser stays with the water. And because we don't touch anything that allows actual heat transfer, uh, I mean, we do touch the gas here, which transfers it to the door, but that's minimal. Airflow tiles don't touch the water or touch the liquid, so there's no heat transfer there. However, I do have some gases inside the airflow tiles that do allow the heat transfer. That being said, though, my liquid is still around 95 degrees, and we could use this as a hot water source to 
create certain builds if you guys do need a slightly hot water source. But having the vacuum means that this heat does not leak out into my ambient temperature outside of the design. But guys, that has been it. It is very easy with a simple design like this to tame the hot water geysers, not allowing the heat to leak out so that you could utilize the heat if you guys want to do so. But of course, guys, if you guys have any questions about the design, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And of course, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.